DOS stands for Dinosaur Operating System. It's called that because it's the operating system that I used when I was a kid, back in like dinosaur times, I guess, because it's an old operating system. The, the, the joke is that I'm old. I'm old and, and so is DOS. Dinosaurs. I have nostalgia for lots of stuff, but one thing that I'm deeply nostalgic for is old PC games. And because of the intricacies and the requirements of DOS emulation and PC games, it's hard to get them to run in a way that makes sense on a handheld or a retro console. Pretty much the only way to do it properly is to play them on a PC. And that's what we're going to be doing today. This is the second video in a multi-part video series looking at DOS emulation. The first video was the one where I showed you the very nerdy, very retro DOS emulation setup that I made. And today we'll learn how to actually use DOS and my custom build of DOS called Dweeb DOS. And then the next video will be about uh, how to get the games running perfect and all the best games as well. So get subscribed if you're not yet and check the description below because I'll have the links to the other videos in this series down there. But now you want to know, how do you actually do this DOS stuff, right? Well, there's a philosophy that I live by. When someone asks me to show them how to use DOS and play DOS games, it's my nerdy obligation to stop whatever I'm doing and run to where they are and pelt them with floppy disks while screaming DOS commands in their face. But I, I can't do that to you here on YouTube, so I'll just explain it using words instead. There's a few different methods for playing old DOS games today in 2024, or whatever year it is when you're watching this video. Obviously, you can buy an old computer with DOS on it and play DOS games in the most authentic way possible, LGR style. There's also Free DOS, which is a modern version of DOS that you can install on modern PCs, and it's actually super cool, but trust me when I say it's not the easy way. Because of compatibility and hardware issues and stuff, and there is an amazing project called ExoDOS, which is a pre-made archive of DOS games which are all pre-configured and ready to rock. I am a huge fan of that project, and I'll probably do a video on it someday, but that's more of, a, of an emulation archive rather than a single running DOS build. So none of these methods are super practical for most people. The solution that I wanted is to have a setup that not only plays DOS games, but that feels like an authentic DOS experience. And I think that the best way to get that is just to use an emulator. The main DOS emulator that people use is called DOSBox, which is a piece of software that is completely free and open source that runs a DOS shell and emulates old PC machines with authentic looking graphics and built in sound card support. My favorite DOSBox version is DOSBox staging because of the built-in shader support and adaptive display mode switching. What I have for you today is a my customized version of DOSBox staging with a few minor additions and tweaks that just make it feel a bit more retro, a few extra features and programs. I call it Dweeb DOS, but it's really just DOSBox staging pre-set up the way that I like it to be set up. And this makes it easy for me to teach you how to use it because it'll be the same for everyone who downloads it and watches this video. So uh, to, get, to get DweebDOS, it's crazy simple. All you need to do is grab the zip file, link below, download the zip, and then you can unzip that to wherever folder that you want it. And then you can run the DOSBox exe file and that, that's it. It should launch full screen and it should look like this, it's just a DOS prompt. One cool thing is that this build is compatible with Wine, so you should have no problem running this on macOS or Linux or even the Steam Deck. Just add it as a non-Steam game and boom, it, it, just, it just works. DOS on the deck, how cool is that? I, actually, that could be an entire video now that I think about it. I'll probably do that at some point. When you first boot up Dweeb DOS, you'll be greeted with this welcome screen that I made and also a blurb about my readme file. And if you type readme, it'll open it in a text editor and there's some basic instructions for how to customize stuff. I highly recommend giving this a read through before doing anything because all the most important info is in here. But there are a few more advanced setup things that you can do, so let's go over those. One thing that I highly recommend you do, just because it's so cool, is create a shortcut to DOSBox EXE and place that somewhere like on your desktop or wherever you want, and then open the properties for that shortcut and set 
the shortcut key to launch the program. I have mine set to Control, Alt, Shift, and F12. That way I can instantly start up DOS from anywhere in Windows. My setup here is a dedicated DOS emulation setup, so getting into DOS quickly is, is a must for me. If you have any video issues like which monitor it launches on or whether you want it to run in a window or full screen or change the aspect ratio or whatever, all the settings can be tweaked in the DOSBox config file. Right here, dosboxstaging.conf. <laughs> you can open that in a text editor like Notepad and change whatever values you want. And there are descriptions for each option. The only things that you should really need to edit in here are the video options, which you can read about and tweak if you need to. And I put the shader option right at the top. So as a DOSBox staging comes with built-in CRT shaders, but I added some more to have more options. My favorite is CRT Geom Tweaked and that's what's enabled by default. But you can change the name of that shader to any of the shaders in the GL shaders directory, which are the ones that I added. You can also disable the shader by putting a pound sign at the start of that line if you want clean, crispy pixels. And there are a lot more options in this file with nice clear explanations of what they do. I'm not gonna go over them here, but you can read through the file and tweak stuff if you're a tweaker. You might notice that I have this beautiful orange as my color for the DOS prompt. This is orange because orange is the best color, the official color of dweebs. But some people prefer other colors, so if you want to change it, you'll be doing that on this line right here, near the bottom of the dock. CHG color 752. If you open the EGA codes PNG file that I put in the resources folder, you can see color codes. For instance, if you wanted it to be an amber color, that would be number 38. So we'll make the line CHG color 738, save the file, and then next time you start up DOSBox, it'll be that color. Easy stuff. And one more thing that you might want to know about, I have this intro screen with a logo and a node about accessing the readme file, but if you want that not to show up, just put CLS as the very last line in the config file. And that should start you off with a fresh, clear DOS prompt instead of my intro screen. So let's learn a bit of DOS, shall we? If you're familiar with DOS, you know all this stuff, but do me a favor and let me know in the comments if there's anything important that I missed or if you have any useful commands or tricks to suggest that I didn't cover. So in DOS, you have this prompt. It's C colon backslash angle bracket. And that, that means that you're on the C drive on the root level folder. By the way, the C drive that you have here in DOSBox isn't your computer's actual C drive. This is the games folder in the DOSBox install that is mounted as the C drive in DOSBox. So straight away, you probably want to know what stuff you have on your drive, right? That's a good place to start. You can type dir to call up a listing of all the directories in your current folder. I always personally add a slash w so that it shows it in a wide list. There you go. This is the names of all your folders. You might notice that each of these folders is a short name, only eight characters. This is a thing with DOS, th this version of DOS. Only eight characters per name, so g get used to it. Uh, let's uh, pick a folder to go into. Uh, Sky Roads. That sounds like a, a video game that would be f fun to play. So now we need to change the directory. The command for this is cd space Sky Roads. And, and then you can see on your command prompt that we're now in the Sky Roads directory. So let's see what's in here. dir slash w. And this tells us all the files and folders that are in this directory. There's a few files in here, but we're only interested in the files that will run the game. We're looking for .exe files, which are executable programs, and .bat files, which are automated batch files, and sometimes games come with those to launch your game easily. Here we can see the obvious choice, skyroads.exe, so we can type skyroads to run the game's executable, and hey, check that out. The game launches right up, and we can play it right away. Now, here's a thing. Uh, when you want to exit the game, you'll need to figure out how. Each DOS game has a different way of exiting. In Skyroads here, you can just press escape at the main menu, but some games hide it within submenus, and some games just straight up don't have an easy way to exit. What you can do if you ever want to quickly exit is just press Alt and F4 on your keyboard to close DOSBox. And then if you have the shortcut key set up to launch DOSBox, like I explained earlier, you can quickly pull it right back up and get back to doing DOS stuff. Let's try one more game. We'll do a directory listing with dir slash w. Let's try Skyroads. We'll go into the Skyroads directory with cd space Skyroads. Oh wait, I just realized. I already tried Skyroads. 
I'm such a silly Billy. Well, I don't want to be in the Skyroads directory, so let's go back a directory by typing cd space dot dot. There we go. That that brings us back a level of the directory tree. So we're, we're back on the root level of C. All right, let's actually try a game that we haven't tried this time. Tyrion is a good game. So we'll change the directory to Tyrion. Then we'll do dir slash w to see what's in here. Oh, wow. That, that's a lot of files. It would take a genius to find the exe or bat files in this list. But no worries, we can do a dir slash w and then add .exe to the end to only show us the .exe files. There's quite a few of those, but I bet Tyrion.exe is the one that we need. And yeah, there you go. We got our game running. I also added a few custom programs and commands for you to use. I added DOS Navigator, which you can access by typing DN anywhere in DOS, and it'll open up this program with a GUI that will let you browse through your directories and launch your apps and stuff. And I also customized the color palette to make it all orange and black and gray. You know, just so it's all on brand. And I also added a text editor. You can type edit or edit with a file name and it'll open the text editor and open the file that you entered. You can use this to write your doctoral thesis or whatever you want or edit the bat files that will run some of the games. <laughs> More on that in a bit. And I added a command called dwb, uh, which stands for dweeb, which you can type anytime to be taken back to the dweeb DOS home screen. And you can type readme here to open the help file that I made for you, which has a cheat sheet of the config file tweaks and all the DOS commands that I thought you should know, if you ever need like a quick access to this info. One more thing I wanted to show you is the clock speed. A DOS box staging has great compatibility across the board, but sometimes you'll need to adjust the clock speed of the emulated CPU. For example, here in the Mars demo that I have installed, it's not running at full speed right away. It's a little slow, but luckily there is a hotkey to increase the clock speed. It's Control F12 to increase the speed and Control F11 to decrease it. So if you ever come across a game that's slow, tap the increase hotkey a few times and see if it runs better, and then tap it some more if you need to. Uh, don't go nuts, there's no point in tapping it 20 times because DOSBox will just crash, just a few taps is usually all you need. And that's the basics of using DOS. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to give you a more in-depth tutorial of how to add games, how to deal with games that need installers and set up files, and how to deal with CD-ROM games that have images that need to be mounted, and also show you my favorite games, obviously. But because I know that some of you are impatient, uh, I'll give you the short, quick version version if you just can't wait and you need to know this stuff today. You can download games from websites on the internet that have the things that you want and that are completely legal or Steam or GOG. Add the game folders to your DOSBox games directory and make sure that you title them with only eight characters. Some games will need to be installed with an install program. When it comes time to select the sound card, just go with Sound Blaster and don't worry about the IRQ and port settings, just pick whatever and it'll work. Stick with the default if that's an option. Some games have CD images that need to be mounted and you can use the image mount command in this syntax to mount those and this command to unmount them. And I have a batch file in the resources directory of my DOSBox install that you can copy to the individual game directories and edit that file to make it quick and easy to mount the CD and start the game and unmount when you're done. And I'll show you in much more detail how to do all this stuff in the next video. And I'll show you all the best DOS games and my personal favorites from my dweeby past. So get subscribed and be patient, damn it, so you don't miss that. And that that's it. That's all I have for you today. A, a ton of DOS knowledge, but most of it's pretty easy. And I, most games work fine without tinkering or anything. So go ahead, download Dweeb DOS using the link below and just try it out and have fun doing DOS stuff. That, that's the idea here. The DOS is fun. It's a fun, novel, nostalgic way to navigate a games library and launch games. And Dweeb DOS feels pretty darn authentic to how it used to feel for me back in the day. Let this operating system in the games take you back to the simpler days, back when there were dinosaurs and stuff. But that's it for me for today. Click the thumbs up button or whatever. Thanks for watching and stuff. I'm Tech Dweeb. Bye bye.